Well, welcome back to the Burl Huffman Athletic Complex. We apologise, we uh, we lost power. We're going to put the blame on the prairie dogs uh, here at the complex that uh, have been uh, uh, a little critters over the last uh, few days. So uh, uh, just to bring you up to date, Chris Schaff held out for a 145-143 win over Jimmy Lutz. And so compound complete. Olivia Dean and Chris Schaff, the US Open champions in that division. And we move on to Burbo. Remains at 50 metres. And it's Diane Cochran, the second seed, against Francesca Benavidez, the fourth seed and defending champion. Cochran has reached three USAC gold medal matches this year, winning the Buckeye Classic last month. She lost the other two to Cindy Zacco, who is in Francesca Benavidez's corner. And um, this is going to be some contest, because again, you've got Benavidez, who's gone back and forth with Maggie Brensinger with the U21 uh, world record. And, uh, and Diane Cochran, who's one of the one of the forces within women's bareboat. Absolutely, but uh, as we've mentioned, it's been a running theme throughout the whole week. The wind is really picked up considerably. It picked up during the men's compound match. Um, those two experienced gentlemen were able to navigate that pretty quickly. We've got some experienced bareboat shooters here, but the wind is pretty strong for these uh, bareboat style archers so we'll see how they navigate this and unlike compound which is cumulative this is a set system similar to well absolutely spot on with with recurve which will be coming up uh, a little later on we've got men's bare boat to follow that's a zach Beisinger and brian way diane cochran gets us underway in this one landing an eight as you could hear Maggie Brensinger was the top seed after the qualification, national champion with a, uh, a new U21 world record, a world record that was uh, taken from her by Francesca Benavidez at uh, Joad Target Nationals just over a year ago. And those two met in the semi-finals here with uh, Benavidez winning 7-3. Maggie Brensinger did, or uh, well has gone on to take bronze. So Brensinger bronze, which one will uh, pick up gold? Which one will take silver between Diane Cochran and Francesca Benavidez? Who, anybody who's followed her story over the last year or so, absolutely roared onto the scene. Uh, Joe had target nationals just over a year ago in Des Moines. Uh, she'd only been uh, involved in the sport a little over six months. I think she'd got a a bow for, for Christmas. She'd picked up a bow a little earlier in her in her life, but hadn't really taken it up as a sport. And um, swimming, she's also very good at as well. And it's has the option. I mean, imagine being that, that gifted and that talented. Multiple sorts that you're competitive at. That's pretty cool. She opened really strong with uh, a nine. It looks like a nine. It'll depend on the judge call. They're looking at it now. As well as a ten, but then there's a low five on target one from Francesca. Diane Cochran reached the gold medal match, a 6-0 win in her first elimination, elim, elimination encounter against uh, Melissa Tennant. A uh, less straightforward uh, encounter, 6-4 Elizabeth Elizondo at the quarter-final stage, and then a 6-0 win over Kay Earls when she got down to the last four. As you can probably hear from our microphones, we are doing our best to, to shield the breeze from the microphones. But uh, as Eric's alluded to, it's, uh, it's creeping up all around us. There's no one direction that it's, uh, it's coming at us from. So we'll do our best. The interesting part about that, I, I mentioned it's kind of shifted throughout the week, but predominantly it's been a tailwind and usually a little bit to the right more than the left. And then right now we've got a hard left wind. Our feather flags are leaning over hard. The American flags behind the targets we mentioned before are sticking straight out. Um, there's an American flag over by the DOS stand that's just taken a beating. So we've got some hard wind right there. And we'll see how the ladies handle it here in the wind. Those first two, first two ends, with the exception of the low five from Francesca, actually look pretty good. They navigated the wind pretty well. So let's see how they do here. And just talk, because it's, it's very similar to the recurve bow, which of course you mm -hmm. shoot. Just talk about 
some of the differences that, that maybe make it a little bit more challenging when, when conditions are this challenging? So it, it, a lot of that depends on what poundage the, the archer is shooting, the arrows that they're shooting. Um, I myself, because I'm shooting with my mouth, shoot a pretty low poundage, so the wind is dramatically more um, impactful on my setup. But because of that, and I'm well aware of that, that I know how to adjust for that. Um, these archers are very exp experienced as well, so they're going to do their best to adjust. Um, most of them are aiming as bare bow. They're probably aiming with their point. So they've got to decide where to aim on the target that's going to allow the arrow to to compensate for the wind as it flies down there. They're at 50 meters. Francesca started with a six, Diane with a seven. And then Francesca's just upped it to an eight. And Francesca's arrows are just straight left, so she probably isn't compensating quite enough. Diane's is left also but a nine. Yeah, anything you I can do, I can do better, I think, was, was the, uh, the mantra there. Eight for Francesca, nine for Diane final arrow of this second set. Still straight left for Francesca, so she's going to need to figure out how to uh, compensate for that with, the, with uh, moving into this next set, provided D Diane's able to finish it here. So we've got 9-7-7 seven, seven for Diane, which is a 23, and then Francesca is 8-7-6. And just talk us through, because, I, I mean, as far as they are apart, there can be differences from, you know, each box. Can there be with the breeze? Depending um, on it's, that part's probably going to be fairly minimal, but the difference in timing. So just in the 20 seconds as it flips back and forth, the wind can, t can ramp up, slow back down, slightly change direction. And so uh, when you're waiting for your shot while your opponent's shooting, you're reading the wind the best you can so that when the time flips to you, You've got to make a choice, and the best the best method is to make your choice, stick with it, make your shot. And if you start second guessing yourself, you can really get in trouble pretty quick. Well, the Paralympic Games coming up. We want to uh, uh, allow you to stay connected with the excitement of the games in Paris with the Paris 2024 Archery Pass. This mobile pass keeps you up to date with competition schedules, merchandise sales, and much, much more. For more details, head to usarchery.org. And as uh, Eric has said, they uh, depart on Tuesday. And the game's getting underway the following week. Opening ceremony, all of that uh, pizzazz. And then um, you've got a little bit of a wait before your competition gets underway, you, yourself and Jordan White. Yeah, each day is going to be a different division, different gender, and they do it day by day. And then Jordan and I are male recurve, open recurve, and we shoot... Um, the fifth day like we'll be near the end in fact for our team we will be the last because we don't have a mixed team and that's the final event the, the day after us so we've got quite a quite a long wait before we actually compete in our head-to-head -head matches from when we qualify well i imagine francesca is wondering what she has to do she well, uh, ups her game and then so too does diane who's four nil up she definitely has been more aggressive in her aiming to the right because she's got it now in the yellow second arrow in the yellow which is great but diane's got a, a four point set lead and her first arrow was a 10. let's see how she does here an eight okay so even just in this set they're tied right now at 18. This last arrow will make a big difference because um, if Francesca is not able to put some pressure on Diane, she'll be able to close it out. The defending champion Francesca Benavidez against Diane Cochran. So there's an 8 from Francesca. Diane needs an 8 to tie and a 9 to win the U.S. Open. And a 10 she with finishes, authority. finishes in style, does yes. Diane Cochran. A 10, and she is... The Buckeye Classic champion and also now follows up just a few weeks later. She is the US Open champion as well, defeating the reigning champion, Francesca Benavidez, who'd knocked out Maggie Brensinger. So it'll be Diane Cochran with the gold, Francesca Benavidez with the silver, and Maggie Brensinger will take home the bronze medal. We're just going to wait for the hugs and the cheers and I will wander around and catch a word with Diane. Yeah, congratulations to both ladies. Great match. Diane very much read the win correctly and was able to put it away.